Hey, this is Mr. Beckstrom, and uh, today we're going to take a look at an example from section 5.4. This is on logarithmic functions, and the problem is, uh, as it is here, it says suppose that our defined function g is equal to log base 2 of 2x minus 2 minus 3. And uh, the first thing they want us to do is find the domain of our function. The domain is all the possible x values that we can put inside this function. So, just one moment here. Um, so remember, uh, when we used when we did it with like the rational functions and uh, some of the radicals, uh, it's any x that we can put in here that's going to give us a defined y value. Now, uh, one thing that we should have learned about logarithmic functions is that we can't take the log of anything that's zero or negative. We can only take the log of positive numbers. So whatever number inside these parentheses here needs to be greater than zero. Not equal or greater, not greater or equal to, but greater than zero because it can't be zero and it can't be negative. So in order to find this out, what we're gonna do is we're just gonna set whatever's inside there. So 2x minus two, and set that uh, greater than zero. Add two to both sides, so we're gonna get 2x is greater than two, and x is greater than one when we divide each side by two. So x has to be strictly greater than one and we can write that in uh, interval notation as starting at one and going all the way to positive infinity. All right, so that is our A. Uh, our B says, what is g of three? This is the function evaluated at three and then what is that point? So g of three, of three is once again we just this is b we just take that function and wherever there's an x in it we're going to put a three in there so log base two um, and then this is going to be two times three minus two minus three so that's how we define g of 3. So that's going to, we have an input of 3 and we'll have an output uh, that will be our y value. So this is equal to log base 2. And this is going to be 6 minus 2 is 4. So log base 2 of 4 minus 3. Now, uh, when we read a logarithmic function like this, what we're saying is, remember, this is the base here. The base to what power gives us a 4? So 2 to what power gives us a 4? And so the log base to uh, 4 is simply just going to equal 2. I can also use my calculator. Now, the one thing about uh, most of these graphing calculators is that they only have a log, which is a log base 10, and they have a natural log, which is a log base E, which is right here, the LN. But they don't have any logs other than 10 and E, uh, bases of 10 and E. So when we have a base of something other than 10 or E, we have to use the base change formula. And that's and I can use either one of these, but I'm going to go ahead and use this. And what it says is that the log of oops, sorry, the log of the four, uh, we take whatever's kind of in the parentheses here. So the log of four divided by uh, the log of whatever that base is of two. And that's just another way of writing uh, log base 2 of 4. And notice that we have 2, which we could kind of reason that out because 2 raised to the two, the second power gives us 4. So this is really just equal to 2 minus 3, which is equal to negative 1. So then we actually have the point with an x value of 3, a y value of negative 1. Uh, let's go ahead and just kind of check that on the calculator, make sure that uh, it's looking right. So pull my calculator back up. 
I'm going to go here and let's put that function in. Notice, once again, I have to use that base change in order to put this function in here. So instead of saying log base 2 of 2x minus 2, I have to do log of 2x minus 2 divided by log of 2. And it's kind of annoying, but uh, that's what we got to do. Now this time I'm going to use natural log because I can use natural log as well. So natural log of 2x minus 2, 2x minus 2. And remember to put the uh, dividing symbol there, uh, natural log. If I use natural log for the top, I got to use natural log for the bottom as well, natural log of 2. And that is going to then be minus 3. Just double check that. It looks right. So if I go to a graph, uh, it's kind of a function that looks like this. So 1, 2, 3, negative 1 looks like it's on there. And let's do one other thing this time. Let's go, let's pull up, go to vars. Go to the y variables, pull up the y1, that's where we put the function in, and we're going to say evaluate that function at 3, and it should shoot us back a negative 1, which it does. So that's another way to check it as well. All right, C says that if g of x is equal to 1, what is x? So instead of giving you the x value, it's giving you the y value. So we're going to replace g of x with 1. So we're looking at, uh, instead of g of x, we're going to have 1 is equal to log base 2 of 2x minus 2 minus 3. So we're replacing our y value with 1. Now we're going to get this, I'm going to kind of flip it around and add 3 to both sides. So log base 2 of 2x minus 2 is equal to 4 because I just added 3 to both sides to get rid of that negative and I flipped them around just to make it a little bit easier. Now I'm going to do the uh, changing from the logarithmic form to the exponential form and I take the base uh, to the right side. Uh, so 2 to the fourth is equal to whatever's in that logarithmic function there. So 2 raised to the fourth power is equal to 2x minus 2. And we solve that. We're going to get 2x is equal to, that's uh, 2 raised to the fourth power, 2, 4, 8, 16. 16 plus 2 is 18. And that means that x is equal to 9. All right, so that point on the graph is going to be uh, x value of 9 and a y value of 1. So 9, 1. Let's go back to our calculator and make sure that makes sense. So going back to the calculator, I'm going to put in a 9 for x and see if I get a 1 back. So go to vars, y function, y variable. I'm going to stick a 9 in there. And sure enough, we get a positive 1 back. So that looks like it works. And then the last thing, D, uh, says, what is the 0 of G? And that means, what's the 0 of this function? Where does it cross the x-axis? And I can either use my 0 function, like we've done before in my calculator, or I can just set this equal to 0 instead of 1. Uh, this time I'm going to use my calculator just uh, because I, I kind of want to do a mix of both ways. So if I do that, I go to my graph, I go to my uh, second trace, which is the calculate. I want to calculate my zero. So first I need uh, a value, a left bound somewhere on the left of that uh, point that it crosses the x-axis. Hit enter there and then just some point to the right. This is just so we don't get multiple points. Uh, and enter. And sure enough, uh, x is equal to 5. And that's when y is equal to 0. So the 0 of g is x is equal to 5. All right. Um, that's it. If you have any questions, uh, x is equal to 5.
uh, let me know, and I hope you have a great rest of your week. Thanks. Bye-bye.